Have you been experiencing a bunch of different symptoms going on? Maybe all these symptoms mimic or seem like mast cell activation syndrome, could be hives, could be digestive issues, could be sinusitis, headaches. All these things are suggestive of high histamine symptoms, but they don't necessarily mean you have that. And so how do you know for sure? Well, in this video, what we're going to do is look at the testing, the objective measurements you can use to really understand if you do have mast cell activation syndrome. My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, I'm going to give you some of the tests that I typically use in my patients when I suspect they might have mast cell activation syndrome, and we'll also cover some of the other ones that are suggested in some of the research papers. So if you're getting a lot out of these videos and want to continue getting videos like this one, click on the like and subscribe button to continue getting videos like this. All right, let's jump into the video. So as we discussed in the last video on mast cell activation syndrome, testing can be a bit tricky and many people suffer with mast cell activation syndromes without a diagnosis for many years. And that's because a lot of times it does mimic a lot of other things and there's currently no consensus on the actual diagnostic criteria. And sometimes the testing can be a bit flawed as well. You can get false negatives, false positives. So in the last video, we covered how symptoms need to occur in different areas of your body, at least more than two different areas, and how important it is to really understand what's driving some of those symptoms because we can't necessarily only always rely on laboratory tests. So with all that out of the way, let's look at some of the specific lab tests that you can use to further hone in on what's driving your high histamine symptoms or mast cell activation syndrome. The first test that we're going to look at is called the serum tryptase. And the tryptase is another molecule that's released from mast cells along with histamine when the cells are opening up and releasing their contents. And elevated levels, especially or shortly after symptoms, are definitely a key marker of mast cell activation syndrome. And there's a specific study that kind of goes into this in more depth that I'll put a link to in the description if you want to check out some of the parameters there. But the tryptase level is definitely one of the key indicators for understanding mast cell activation syndrome. And typically the cutoff range for that is about 11 or higher. And some diagnostic criteria will say 20% plus two of your baseline levels. Let's say you have a baseline tryptase level of around five, and then you have some kind of flare up and you do a test. Well, if it goes up two points plus 20%, whatever that math comes out to, then that's also considered diagnostic for mast cell activation syndrome. But tryptase alone, there's other things that can also cause that to go up, other conditions. So it's not exclusive to mast cell activation syndrome. The other test that's important that I use in my practice, these are the two typically that I use, is histamine. So histamine and histamine metabolites. So testing for histamine in the blood can be tricky because it's basically degraded into its metabolites and methylhistamine and others very quickly. And so typically you want to do it in the urine because it's going to have more of those metabolites present because that's how the end methylhistamine is excreted is through the urine. So elevated levels of those can support the diagnosis of mast cell activation syndrome. Even though blood histamine levels aren't necessarily a good indicator, if they do show up high, then for sure you know you have something going on there with your mast cells or something else causing elevated histamine levels. So again, those are the two different tests that I typically do, along with some other things I'm going to discuss below. But typically in my practice, I'm doing the urinary histamine metabolites and tryptase to better understand if you have mast cell activation syndrome using the other criteria that we talked about in the previous video as well. But some other things that sometimes you'll read about are prostaglandin levels. These are usually not going to be covered by insurance. They may require like different layers of prior authorization and things like that to get the test covered. But Specific types of prostaglandins when they're elevated can be another indicator of mast cell activation syndrome. Another test that you'll often see is chromogranin A. This is another blood test, and it's another thing that's released by mast cells when they spill their contents out. And it could be measured in a blood test, and elevated levels would be suggestive of 
Maslow activation syndrome, and there's different ranges for both that and the prostaglandins. And again, I'm not as familiar with these two tests, but just thought I would mention them for completeness. Some of the proposed diagnostic criteria definitely advocate for a broader range of testing to confirm that you have mast cell activation syndrome. So the chromogranin A, prostaglandin D2, histamine, and methylhistamine, and even other markers are advocated for. So I don't think you necessarily need to do all of these tests to have a firm understanding of what's going on in your body, but the levels, how high those levels are, is also going to potentially point you in different directions. So it's really important that you're working with someone that really understands the inner workings of both the symptoms and the lab ranges that would typically be expected in something like mast cell activation syndrome. As I said, there are other conditions that can cause elevated levels of these markers. Some other tests that I will commonly do in my practice when I suspect someone has mast cell activation syndrome or that their symptoms are coming from high histamine levels is a total IgE level. Sometimes we'll test for specific allergic markers, but getting a global understanding of what your IgE level is, which is the immunoglobulin that goes up when you have allergic reactions and can trigger more mast cell activation. If you have really high IgE levels, then you can hone in on maybe some specific targets to lower the histamine response. And just because you have elevated IgE levels doesn't mean you don't have mast cell activation syndrome, but it can help you, again, understand how to focus in on what to treat and how to treat it. Eosinophil testing is also important and helpful. Eosinophils are found on a normal white blood cell test, so most people have gotten these done on their lab tests anyways. But high levels, again, do suggest like an increased histamine response. And eosinophils are a type of white blood cells that are definitely involved more in a allergic type of response. And so if you do have high eosinophils, it's suggestive of the fact that your body is producing higher amounts of histamine. Doesn't necessarily mean it's mast cell activation syndrome, but again, it's sort of painting that picture. A lot of these tests, though, they do change a lot from one day to the next. So just because you have one test that's showing this elevated doesn't necessarily mean that it's always like that, especially when you're looking at white blood cells like eosinophils. Those can change week to week, sometimes even day to day. I think it's important, too, to mention some other things that can mimic mast cell activation syndrome or also be considered in this category, which would be chronic urticaria, systemic mastocytosis, which is a more severe form of mast cell activation syndrome. Like I said, various autoimmune conditions can also present with similar types of symptoms and similar lab findings. So that's why it's important to work with a doctor or healthcare practitioner that really understands the ins and outs of this diagnosis and the treatment of it as well. Diagnosing mast cell activation syndrome can be tricky and you don't always need to rely on lab tests. Although if you're gonna rely on one, that tryptase test is probably the most supported in the literature. Not everyone agrees, and that's why it's important to work with a knowledgeable healthcare practitioner that can basically guide you in the right steps to getting a clear diagnosis and, more importantly, getting a resolution of those symptoms. And it's a combination of using the clinical assessment, your doctor's observations, and the laboratory test that's going to give you a comprehensive understanding on what to do. Knowing the right lab tests and knowing the symptoms and knowing the ins and outs of this is really important for you on the patient side because you're going to be tracking your symptoms and knowing how those symptoms are affected by different treatments can really help your provider really hone in on where they need to shift their focus. If, say, one treatment doesn't work, they need to be able to understand why that didn't work or why maybe it made you worse so you can use that information to further your treatment approach. Sometimes the negative responses are just as helpful as the positive responses. So it's important not to leave those types of things out and tracking your symptoms and tracking what's going on with your body is really helpful for your doctor and ultimately is gonna help you get a better treatment and help you feel better. So hopefully that helps you better understand testing for mast cell activation syndrome. Definitely can be tricky, but hopefully I've laid out some clear things to look at and understand here 
And if you do have questions on anything in this video, definitely drop them in the comment section. If you want a more customized, detailed answer to your question, consider joining the membership program where I'll have more time and attention to dedicate to your questions. Either way, though, I'll definitely answer your questions. That's why I make these videos. Leave it in the comment section. Until next time, might it interest you in another video on mast cell activation syndrome and understanding your health better. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.